Good evening, and welcome to this second update from the staff and leadership team at Belmont since having to move out from our building and learn to adjust to being church together in a very different setting. Now we all recognise, don't we, that because of this current situation, it's very easy to feel distant and disconnected from what's going on in the different areas of ministry within the Belmont family. So the purpose of this update is to inform you of some of the exciting and encouraging things that are taking place. It's probably worthwhile before we do just that to remind you of the ways that you can keep in regular contact yourself. Firstly, of course, Jill is producing a regular focus news sheet and that has all the details of how to connect to our Sunday services online and a whole lot more information on a variety of topics. And if you're not already receiving focus, but you'd like to, then please contact the office. You can also find those same links on the website, belmontchapel.org.uk and on Church Street. The weekly focus, of course, also includes links that you will need if you wish to join in with one of the regular Prayer Thursday sessions, which are being hosted on Zoom. It'd be great to welcome you with us as we collectively bring our praise and our concerns to our Heavenly Father. And if you'd like to find out more about how to connect via Zoom, then please get in touch with the office by email or through the usual phone number, and we'll link you up with someone who can help you. Secondly, it's been so encouraging to hear about the ways that home groups are staying connected and are getting involved in supporting one another. Now, if you're not connected with a home group currently, and you'd like to be, then once again, please contact the office. Well, that's all from me for the moment. So let's pray before I hand over to the next member of the team. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the reassurance we can have that in whatever situation we find ourselves, you remain the same yesterday, today, and forever. Help us, we pray, to keep our eyes fixed upon you, both individually and collectively. Thank you for the sacrifice of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who gives us hope for the future. Thank you, too, for the indwelling and empowering of your Spirit. Help us, we pray, to experience your presence in our lives day by day as we seek to walk in step with your precious Son. Amen. Hi, Church. It's Rachel here just to give you a little update on what's happening in the Young Families team at the moment. So um, Amy and I are both still working. We think we've just about mastered all the technology and um, we've been trying to keep up with lots of people in, um, in our ministry and across the community of people that we normally have contact with. Um, so between us, we're trying to just keep in touch um, with all of our families. And um, we've been producing some content to go out as well, like the Sunday morning stuff. Um, I've been working with a lot of the, the team who normally do Young Belmont on a Sunday morning to try and um, get some sessions out for families to do at home, um, as well as some bits and pieces in the week to keep people entertained, um, just to give some different faces, uh, some ideas of fun activities that people could be doing at home, um, that kind of thing. We've, um, we've just launched the Belmont Isolation Olympics, um, where families are going to be sending in their events and um, they're going to compete against one another um, to, to win the coveted gold, silver and bronze medals. Um, we're doing that across the board with youth work as well. Um, so that'll be a really fun way to kind of just keep people connected and remind people that we're all part of um, one big body together. Um, and that's involving lots of people who are uh, we normally have contact with either on a Friday night or on a Sunday um, we just want lots of people to be involved in that. Um, we're also trying to just keep up with people personally in individual conversations and um, calls or videos, um, just to make sure that that everyone that we normally would be seeing during the week, we can kind of keep up with, make sure that um, if there's people need some support, then we're there for them, um, just to offer a friendly face and and um yeah listening here really um so they're they're kind of the main things that we're doing um hopefully you'll see us around and about virtually 
um, in the world. We're trying to keep up with our teams as well and just keep them connected and involve them as much as possible where we can with what's happening. So, um, yeah, I think that's probably it. And now I'm waffling, so I think I'm going to stop. So Amy and I, I think, would both really value prayer for our communications um, and just the way that we we manage that because there's now so many different ways that we can communicate. I think both of us are finding that, that juggling all of that together, uh, trying to keep up with people um, and just making sure that we have um, across the spectrum that we're, we're able to do that. Um, I think that can be a bit tricky and we would love prayer personally as we, as we try to manage our work um, life balance in amongst all of that while we're also um, stuck at home and we'd love prayer that that families feel like they're still connected with us that we're able to achieve that a little bit through um, the simple things that we're that we're doing each day um, and just pray for our families that that this would be a chance where we can help them to see um, the light and the hope of of the Lord Jesus in amongst all this difficult time Please do be praying for families, um, for those at home, particularly with with small children or or any age children. Um, I think life at the moment is chaotic and can kind of go from the highs and the lows really quickly of really good times and then really stressful times as well. And for kids who who don't really understand what's happening at the moment, I think it's really hard. Um, so please pray for them and for their parents as they try to help them navigate this new. Um, situation for as long as it goes on um, I think that would be really really helpful so thank you so much. Hello so um, what are we doing in youth work? Well uh, lots <laughs> it might not surprise you but young people don't tend to leave the house much anyway and tend to look at their screens a lot so our job's a breeze sort of and um, what are we doing we're doing lots we're um using our instagram feed a lot that's uh, belmont chapel youth if you want to follow us um and we're uploading daily thoughts of the day we're uploading uh, different challenges and ways to keep people uh, active and connected our real hope um out of all of this is that we help young people to feel connected to each other and to us and um, just to try and fight those sorts of feelings of isolation uh, boredom uselessness that um we can all get from time to time we're also doing um friday night uh, virtual youth clubs um where we had uh, about 10 10, uh, maybe 15 people um, this Friday uh, log in and we were doing scavenger hunts around people's houses that was really fun um, and we're hoping for more of that to generate uh, we're doing Sunday nights uh, we're still doing Bible study live uh, with a group of young people Sunday morning we're doing uh, youth work Bible studies as well and um, we're also really encouragingly uh, doing uh, schools work still and um, so I've been working in St Peter's and St Luke's through this year um, and from Easter um, we're hoping to do uh, some pastoral support uh, in St Peter's um, and in St Luke's starting tomorrow actually on Thursday morning um I'm going to be meeting with uh, about five or six uh, lads from St Luke's who um we're virtually conferencing and just talking about life and uh, what this life looks like. And um, they're all year 11, so they're all a bit stressed and sad and worried about the fact that they haven't been able to do their exams, they haven't been able to say goodbye to people. Um, it's a real uh, hard time to be a 16 year old I tell you that um, so yeah so what can you be praying for and um, pray for me tomorrow morning I would really appreciate that pray that um, I've got the right words the right listening uh, for these lads and that we get on and get to know each other and um, pray for uh, the young people within this church um, because we're trying our best to make sure that no one's isolated that people know that there's someone there that they can talk to and listen to and um, Pray that they use that when they need it and that we're um, noticing when they do need it as well and pushing into the, into that. Um, pray for uh, the uh, Connect Evening Service that we're hoping still to do uh, on Easter Sunday evening. Um, we're hoping to have a young person speak there. Um, and uh, yeah, just, just some thoughts around that. That would be really good. Um, and pray for us as well. Uh, my, my big fear, I suppose, if I'm honest, is um, we come out of this and we had a huge amount of momentum uh, going into this term in terms of uh, how many non-Christian young people we were reaching and uh, meeting and sharing Jesus' love with. And I worry that when we get back in, um, that momentum's going to have gone and we're going to have to work hard to rebuild it. So pray that God protects those relationships. Um, a lot of them are connected with us online and um, virtually. And so, yeah, hopefully um, we continue to be able to just get alongside them, get to know them, build good relationships and show them uh, that Jesus can really change their lives. 
thank you so much for um, all the support and love that you pour into us as a youth work team. Um, also, be praying for Gemma. Um, even though uh, the, the world is as it is, uh, currently she's um, at Moreland's. Um, she's still in their house, but she's at Moreland's. Um, and so she's going through lectures. She's doing uh, lots of different assignments and she's got a presentation this week, um, which is very stressful when you can't actually see the people that you're presenting with or talk to them. Um, so yeah, please... Um, yeah, be praying for her, be praying for her uh, calmness and her uh, intelligence to really shine through uh, and for the work that she's put in to really pay off. Uh, God bless you all. Um, love being part of this church family. And uh, yeah, look forward to uh, seeing you all again in person one day. Bye. Greetings from the student and young adult ministry team. Um, last time I spoke to the church, I said that I was a team leader without a team and I asked you to pray about that. Well, I'm really, really grateful that the Lord has brought alongside me people, members from the, of the church that want to invest in students and young adults in Belmont. And so we'll be having our first meeting, those of us that are able to, later this week. So I'm really encouraged by that. Um, the young adults in the church, a number of them have been working really hard alongside their jobs and other and study, uh, doing things to help us as a church meet together and worship together. And uh, so we're so thankful for that and also the support that they've been able to give to youth and children's work. It's been lovely to see them connecting together many in the base group, this fellowship group that are really, really encouraging one another online. And I know that they would want to welcome others that want to join them. And it was a, it's lovely to see the kind of fun things they're doing and also uh, the way they're encouraging each other in prayer. And um, on Sunday, we were able to get together for communion. So that was a great expression of our unity and support uh, together. Meanwhile, the students, well, um, they are officially in university vacation time now, um, but it's a very strange year. <laughs> and um, some are back home and feeling very supported. Some are back home and it's more of a challenge. And maybe those who are home are figuring out quite where life is and where where they invest their time and energy. Some are still here, maybe because they felt it was safer for them or their family, uh, but there's this dilemma, should we actually go home? And I, I think that must feel very hard, especially if you're in a house share and your housemates are gradually moving on. Um, so we're carrying on meeting over the holidays. We've had two student stream meetings, which have been wonderful, a bit chaotic, but wonderful to get together and read the Bible and then break into small groups to pray. And we want to continue doing that. And the team are fantastic. There's loads of ideas and it's just a case of channeling those ideas and um, uh, helping people grow in um, gifts that they have and ideas that they have to be able to lead and bless others. And so we'll be looking to join up together in prayer triplets and be keeping an eye out for those who perhaps are on the edge um, and also encourage one another as we think how we reach out. Um, some are considering volunteering or yeah, thinking of different ways of sharing their faith through this time. Um, yeah, so we would value your prayers as we get to know Jesus better. I think this will be the prayer for the young adults and students and the team supporting them. Um, we want to get to know Jesus better, deepen our relationship with him, um, to encourage one another in our worship of him and our witness for him. So we thank you for your prayers. We're so thankful for the team, for technology, and um, we just want to put our trust in God in this time. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's really nice to be with you this evening, even if it's only with you virtually. Um, just before I, uh, I share a few thoughts with you from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, I think I probably ought to explain why I've got this funny scratch on my head. I haven't been colouring myself in. Uh, it's because I went out for one of my permitted walks 
and managed to get my head scratched on a branch. I will spare you the details, but there we are. You should never let the leadership team out on their own. Never a good idea. Um, as we just got into this new situation, I was reading Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, and there were a number of things in it that I thought were really relevant to the new situation that we find ourselves in. So I just want to share those with you briefly this evening. Um, just the actual situation that Paul was in is very uh, helpful, I think, in terms of the way that we might be feeling right now. See, Paul was probably writing this letter uh, from Corinth in the southern part of Greece, and he was writing to a church that he'd founded up in Thessalonica in the northern part of Greece, about 450 kilometres away. And he was desperate to go and see them in person, and he couldn't do it. He refers in chapter 2 and verse 17 uh, and 18 for the incredible intense longing that he had to go and visit his brothers and sisters. He says, I wanted to come again and again, but Satan blocked our way. And probably for the first time in my life, I'm finding it impossible to meet with my brothers and sisters. I mean, it's wonderful to do things uh, virtually in the way that we're doing it now, but it's just not the same, is it? as face to face. And I'm getting a sense of the frustration that Paul must have felt when he really wanted to be with his brothers and sisters and just couldn't. And my prayer is that one of the positive things that will come out of all of this when it's over, and of course it will be over at some point, is that we will just have a deeper sense of love for one another and an increased sense of the preciousness of the fellowship that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, Paul says in uh, chapter 2 and verse 19, uh, he talks about his fellow believers as being his hope, his joy, his crown in which he will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when he comes. That's a lovely thought, isn't it? That we are the hope, the glory, the joy and the crown of one another in the Lord Jesus Christ. Second thing I think that comes out from 1 Thessalonians is that emphasis that we've just seen in that verse on the fact that Jesus is coming back. And one of the things I think that uh, the current situation reveals to us is just how fragile the current world is. It, it seems so strong, doesn't it? So powerful, so solid, just a few weeks ago. Uh, and now it just feels like it's like a you know, a house of cards and just a relatively small thing has managed to create utter chaos. This world, the Bible tells us, is passing away with its systems and its values and its way of doing things. We are looking for a new heaven and a new earth when the Lord Jesus Christ returns. And again, I think the current situation will help us to appreciate how solid our hope is for the future that the Lord Jesus Christ will bring compared to the lack of solidity of the current world in which we find ourselves. But we have to wait for that future. It's not quite yet. And as we wait, how should we live? Well, Paul tells us in chapter 3 and verse 12, he says, May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else just as ours does for you. Love is the key. And again, isn't this a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to demonstrate love, not just to one another within the church community, which is really important, but also, as Paul says here, to everyone else as well. Our love might increase and overflow to one another and to everyone else. And you know what? We all have the opportunity to do that. Some of us will have to self-isolate and be in our homes for the next however many weeks it is. Uh, some of us will have to go out every day to be key workers on the front line. And many of us will be somewhere in between, doing our best to stay safe, to protect vital services, but also having some level of interactions as we go out shopping and, and uh, go out for our exercise. We have opportunities, whatever we're doing, to be loving the people around us. So let's take those opportunities to show love, 
to be contacting one another. Let's be sending texts and phoning one another and emailing, Facebook messaging. Let's be keeping in contact to show our love. And let's be doing what we can to support those around us and show them the hope and the love of Christ as well. One final thing. Did you notice that that work of love is actually God's work in us? Paul says, again, chapter 3, verse 12, may the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else. It's God's work. It's the work of the Holy Spirit in us. So final thing, may we use this time to prioritise spending time with the Lord. Let's be in prayer. Let's be in his word. Let's be imbibing the Holy Spirit that he might transform us increasingly into the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And finally, let me read these words from chapter 5, verse 23 and 24. Paul writes this, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. That's the work of the Holy Spirit, to sanctify us through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Amen.